Welcome to the Launchpad. Today, I'm joined by Noah Petro, a planetary scientist and project scientist for Artemis III. We're now just under two days away from OSIRIS-REx, America's first asteroid sample mission, delivering back a sample from asteroid Bennu. Noah, thank you for joining us, and how are you feeling? I'm excited. Uh, getting rocks from another piece of our solar system always gets the heart rate pumping, and so I, I can't wait to see what uh, mysteries uh, Bennu holds for us. Can you share how you're involved with the OSIRIS-REx mission? I'm a cheerleader. Uh, you know, I, I don't have any personal investment in, in OSIRIS-REx, but many of my friends, my colleagues, my coworkers are certainly here at Goddard. We managed OSIRIS-REx. Well, we actually still manage it. And so we are all invested in this. You know, even though I'm not on the OREx team, um, what they are going to do and the, the things that they are going to, to, to answer about the samples as well as the data they collected from the asteroid when the spacecraft was there, will fundamentally change our view of the solar system. And so I'm excited to, to ingest that information and apply it to my own research uh, of the moon. Well, can you explain kind of the significance of this first sample return, what it proves we're able to do, but also how this could benefit future planetary science? At, you know, I think that the biggest benefit to planetary science is that OSIRIS-REx had surprises. Bennu was thought before we got there to be kind of like a beach, fine-grained material all across it. When we get there, we see it's covered in small rock fragments. And that causes us to go back and reassess our fundamental understanding of the data that we collected on the Earth, our, how we interpret asteroids. And, and when that happens, that's the forefront of science. You know, science is not always about getting it right the first time, going in with a hypothesis, and when you're proven wrong, understanding why you got to that point. So, so for me, OSIRIS-REx is already paid huge dividends. The next step of getting these samples back will, will further our understanding because we will have pristine samples unaltered by entry into the Earth's atmosphere. And so we will be able to ask fundamental questions about what this asteroid tells us about our history, our solar system's history, and our place in the universe. And how does this connect with, I know you've worked with some of the Apollo 17 samples, you're working with Artemis three. How does it kind of all link together with working with these samples from different planetary bodies? Samples from, from planetary bodies are a lot like doing genealogy. It's building up a family tree. There's the branch of the family tree that's the moon. There's the branch of the family tree that's Mars. The trunk is maybe the Earth. And how do the samples from Bennu change our interpretation from what we've seen from the moon, what we expect to see from Mars, but also what we see here on the Earth and what the earliest part of the solar system was like. Again, these samples from Bennu, we think, will reflect very, very early processes in the solar system, similar to what we've learned by studying Apollo samples and similar to what we'll learn from the Artemis III samples. So this is about filling in unknowns about the earliest history of the solar system and what they can tell us about our planet, our solar system, and indeed solar systems that we see in other um, parts of the universe. We believe that OSIRIS-REx is bringing back about a half a pound of material on board. How is it determined? Well, how first do we keep that pristine through that reentry period? But then how do we determine who gets to work with it? What experiments get to study? That's pretty limited. That's a great question. So, so the, the sample return capsule will be pressurized. It will be um, you know, kept pristine, thermally isolated as much as possible as it reenters the Earth's atmosphere. So our, our goal for the, the return is to keep it as pristine as possible. Um, a day after re-entering the Earth and landing in Utah, we are going to get those samples to Houston into the curation facility, the same facility that, that the Apollo samples um, are, are kept in. Um, what's going to happen initially is that we're going to assess what did we get and then eventually start hand, uh, sharing samples with partners, uh, with Canadian space research, with Japanese scientists, and then sharing samples with researchers all around the globe. We are going to keep some portion of the sample pristine so that future researchers 50 years from now can go back and look at untouched samples. But we do have a plan for getting these samples into laboratories around the globe um, in, in a timely manner. You know, the samples do no good sitting isolated in a facility. What we want to do is get those into laboratories around the world so that the scientific bonanza that awaits us uh, can be realized. Why do you think missions like this are so critical now? We're doing samples on Mars to hopefully bring back eventually soon. We're working on Artemis mission, obviously, but now asteroids and other type of missions. Why so important now? 
rock fragments, pieces of solid material, like what I'm holding in my hand, are little treasure chests. And when we can get them into laboratories on Earth um, under the best experiments and the best equipment known to humankind, we were able to advance science. We learn a lot by going to visit planets, but by bringing pieces of those objects back to Earth, it allows us to understand, again, the mysteries of the solar system. And not just today, but for generations to come, the same way that Apollo samples now, 50 plus years later, are still being analyzed and new questions are being raised, old answers are being challenged. Um, samples from Bennu, samples from asteroids, samples from across the solar system help us unravel this very, very complex history that, that, uh, that our solar system has experienced over four and a half billion years. An important history we're trying to unravel is we really are at the beginning of what most are calling this new era of space exploration and understanding. What advice or encouragement would you give to this new generation that's considering what their future looks like and maybe why they should get involved in space? Well, I was thinking about this just the other day that, that you know, we are going to see new early career people from around the world get excited in planetary science um, with OSIRIS-REx, with Artemis, with Psyche about to launch to go study a metal asteroid, with Lucy about to make its first flyby. You know, immediately there's a lot that's happening, but over the next decade plus, there's going to be a demand for, for new energetic, excited scientists and engineers. Right? Scientists, you do not want me building the, this hardware or building this spacecraft. It requires a team, a community of people around the world to, to realize the scientific objectives that, that we have for understanding our place in the solar system. And you know, for those early you know, students, whether it's elementary school, high school, college, you know, math science is, is so critically important, but communication skills as well. And, and again, it's not just sciences. We need writers. We need people who can tell our stories. We need a, a whole host of people who are excited about what we're doing to realize it. Well, I know it's an exciting day and a busy day. So we wish you and the entire Goddard team luck. We're uh, tracking as it comes back now, just less than two days. And uh, we wish you all the best and hopefully you can connect again uh, once we get to see these beautiful samples back on Earth. Can't wait. Thank you so much for uh, spending some time with me today. Thank you.